and then you just turn on the looper again just to and then change the pitch manually. Make it go really low. And you can do this on the fly manually or automate it. So, this is the completed schematic, um, and it incorporates pretty much everything that I've added. Uh, the schematic here, the purpose of it is basically to show you where the connections are on the individual chip, but on the module board, it's fairly simpler. I'm going to show uh, this again uh, towards the end of the video with blown up portions so you can see the more more detail here. Uh, but basically this incorporates the 555 timer, the sequencer, uh, the ISD 1820 chip, um, the control voltage uh, input, um, as well as the audio line input for all aspects of the circuit. And I just use the module, uh, even though you can use the individual chip and just unplug it out of the module um, because it's just plugged into a simple socket. It's not soldered in. So um, if you want to make your own uh, protoboard uh, version, it's easy. Let's turn that off because it's irritating. All right, so now... That's our finalized uh, sampler board. I have pretty much every feature added to it that I could think of. If you guys could think of more, I have the control voltage based on the little sequencer I built here um, with the four potentiometers, a four step sequencer. I can make it eight step. It's based on the CD4017. The clock is run by this little 555 timer which is, this is the tempo potentiometer for it. Um, I have switches here that I've added. This is for looper. This is to allow for feed through. Um, here are the manual switches for record, play edge, play level. And I could switch between the automated ones for play edge, play level from the sequencer. Um, this right here is our little transistor that goes to ground for the control voltage. This switch allows for control voltage to go in or you could turn it off. And so it just goes from the regular one, which is the regular potentiometer from the original circuit, which is a voltage divider with 470 kilo ohms. This is the bias uh, potentiometer that's wired as a voltage divider um, for our um for our uh transistor to ground um so basically that gets us into the the base of the transistor into the 500 millivolt range this is the original potentiometer that controls the pitch here's the 470k here's a 10k and this is all going into the rosk pin pin 10 through that little connection right there where the r4 resistor used to be um and uh and that's it the output just goes through a 100 uh, uh a 100 microfarad capacitor uh electrolytic uh, electrolytic capacitor right there in the middle of this view and that goes out to through a jack to uh an amp and uh and that's it i don't even need this um um, op amp to do anything here since uh, it works so fairly well um, and that's about everything that I could do to this board um, let me know if you could it all runs from 5 volts and then the output signal you can mix in with um, a drum machine circuit like I built before and so a little bit further explanation on the uh, feed through and the LED portion of the circuit. So the feed through pin is basically when it's brought to VCC, all of the other um, 
play back, play uh, edge, play level, and record pins go low. And it allows anything that comes in, any input through the microphone, go directly to the output to the speaker or amplifier, or whatever you're using. Um, the looper feature um, is basically coming uh, from when you short the LED circuit, um, the LED pin, which is pin 15, uh, to one of the play circuits, uh, basically at the end of a uh, message, the little LED light goes on, uh, blinks for a short period of time, and that activates the loop. Um, and that's how that feature works. So I just put a switch to turn that on or off um, at the top of the screen. Here's an expanded view of the audio input circuit. So the module comes with the, all the resistors and capacitors you see here attached to the electric microphone, including the electric microphone. But if you want to make your own circuit, um, this is how to do it. Um, the audio input line goes into the mic uh, signal line, which is uh, pin um, uh, four of the actual chip and um, you can add a switch to turn off the microphone. The external audio source uh, can come from an iPad or any outputs uh, signal from any other device. Manual pitch control is basically uh, copied from Casper Electronics original design which is a 100k potentiometer as a voltage divider and you put that 470k resistor in there uh, the larger the resistor, the slower um, the playback speed and the lower the pitch. And the 10K resistor uh, in the middle is just uh, basically making it so that that's the highest you can go. Um, recording at a normal volume or a normal pitch rate, uh, the potentiometer should be set somewhere in the middle. Um, otherwise, uh, it won't record at a very high um, uh, sampling frequency. The control voltage for um, controlling the uh, pitch in an automated fashion from a sequencer basically goes into a biased resistor. The resistor is biased to be barely on and um, adding a scaled down version of uh, control voltage between 0 and 5 volts uh, takes the voltage and delivers it to the base of the transistor um, between about 500 and 600 or so millivolts. And at that level, the transistor functions like a very large resistor that um, becomes um, less large and the current increases through it as the control voltage goes up. I've described this thoroughly in a separate video. The input controls of record, play edge, and play level are controlled in this little circuit. They could be attached to the buttons. The buttons already come on the actual module, um, but I wanted to add buttons that I could put away from the module so you don't um, press on it from far away, and th these are easier buttons to push. Also, I wanted to add inputs that I can control from a separate uh, circuit. Um, including a sequencer gate signal, and this could also uh, be controlled by um, a microcontroller, such as an Arduino um, or various other um, microcontrollers. So these are all options that I added to this circuit. I built a four-step sequencer um, for this circuit. This is based on a CD4017 decade counter, which is controlled by a clock signal. And basically, I've discussed this thoroughly in a whole separate video about uh, making a sequencer, but I have the output pins on the CD4017, 0, 1, 2, and 3 um, going uh, in, getting split into two separate um, signals. One is a gate signal, which is controlled by a switch, and the output of the, those switches are all going to diodes connected together. And I have that going into a transistor, which is gated by the clock um, signal. And that's going in to trigger either the play edge or the play level circuits. Um, the other outputs from the uh, CD4017 go into potentiometers, which set control voltage between 0 and 5 volts. 
and that's further divided down later on in the line. Finally, I have here the clock uh, driver for the sequencer, which is basically a 555 timer wired in a stable mode. That last capacitor that I didn't la label there is a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor um, and two 5K resistors with a potentiometer to control the pace or the tempo. So that pretty much completes the circuit. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll leave you with a little test of what you can do with this and um, recording a DJ scratch demo of a record and playing that using the sequencer. Let's do a test. I have the iPad with a DJ app here. I'm not going to show the music too long. Um, and I've recorded a DJ scratch um, from a record, which sounds like this. And I recorded that into my um, little uh, ISD 1820 sampler. And that's what it sounds like on playback. And if you loop it, you can change the pitch. You can change it manually. And now if we turn the loop off and just turn it on with the control voltage. And you can make a nice little jam out of it. sort of jamming on its own. You can just turn that off. And you have it playing a normal mode, which is this one. And you can turn that off too by turning off all of these guys. That will allow things like DJ scratch sounds like this or other samples. So fairly versatile and you could do a lot of things with it. Uh, now that it's like completely hooked up here. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching.